thank you. Um, well, this is probably going to be the slightly more boring talk of the afternoon, uh, but one that's probably going to have slightly more practical applications for you, given that uh, queue date time and queue locale is something that you hopefully use quite a lot of, if at least implicitly in your day-to-day -day queue coding. Um, so who am I? I'm John Late. I'm a KDE contributor and maintainer of parts of our, our localization stack, date, time. I do printing, I do PIM. Currently working on our KDE Frameworks 5 effort. Um, I'm also the Qt maintainer for Qt print systems. Please don't beat me up. Um, I have 10 minutes, 20 slides. Time to start. Go. Right. KDE has its own set of locale and date time classes. Uh, this is because historically uh, Qt support was rather poor compared to the requirements we had for a very international audience. Uh, we ship 70 different languages. We uh, basically use in pretty much every country on the planet. Uh, so we had very complex needs. Uh, this led to us coming up with a whole bunch of classes uh, to implement the stuff that we needed, particularly for our PIM suite. Um, all our calendaring stuff, uh, K-Organizer, K-Mail, etc. Also translations, collation and stuff. Um, the problem with all this is it creates a massive and unnecessary dependency for any external developers. We've had in the past people fork our PIM libraries to use in their own PIM apps uh, simply because they didn't want to pull in K-Locale and all the other stuff and the extra weight it did. Qt has greatly improved though. And with, uh, it's still got a few features missing, but it is considerably better in Qt 5. So this has led as part of our Qt Frameworks, uh, KDE Frameworks 5 effort uh, to change our monolithic KDE libs into nice, neat, standalone libraries. Uh, we've got a KF5 talk tomorrow, David, David 4, go along see it, he'll tell you all about it. Big obstacle for us was K-Locale, K-Date Time. Uh, we want to get rid of that dependency and switch to using the Q classes instead. However, that meant we needed to add a whole bunch of missing features to Qt. These are the ones that we've put in for 5.2. Um, we've got collation, we've got time zone, we've got some new uh, extra features in Qt date time as well, and a whole bunch of convenience methods. So let's have a quick look at them. Um, Qt collator. This is one that I think quite a few people have been wanting in a long time. Lars did a proof of concept, and uh, Alex Pohl picked it up and implemented it. Um, obviously, it's comparing strings using a localized collation algorithm. We're abstracting the host system. We don't implement it ourselves. Trust me, it's not something you want to try do yourself, um, which means we have to unfortunately choose a subset of features to support. So you don't get all of the features that all of the platforms support, but a common most used set. Um, if you're on Linux, please make sure you have the ICU headers installed so that you pick up ICU uh, collation. Otherwise, you'll get the POSIX fallback, which doesn't support anything much. It just sorts things using standard ASCII uh, implementation. So um, usage, you just initialize it with the Q locale that you want. It'll default defaults to the default locale. You can use it with the standard template-based sorting algorithms. Uh, you can be case sensitive, ignore punctuation, you can put in numeric mode, so 1, 10, and 100 sort in the correct order and not the alphabetic order. Uh, you have Q-collator compare for fast, as fast as for one-offs, uh, or you can use sort keys, which is Q-collator uh, sort key class for if you're doing repeated compares, it generates the sort keys to use for you. Uh, very simple usage here, example, just create your collator, your list, standard sort, begin, end, in the collator, bang, done. Um, that's the simplest uh, use case. If you want to see the more advanced stuff, have a look at the docs. Um, time zones. Most of you don't need to know about this stuff. If you write PIM apps, yes, you might do, but uh, mostly it's, it's embedded into QDate time for your usage. Basically, it's this, a nice, clean, stateless calculator, abstracts time zone support across all the platforms. Uh, we're using Olson or IANA IDs um, simply because that's what's used on most platforms. Um, it's a Qbyte array because it changes a lot. You know, you don't, can't guarantee you have any given time zone on any platform, so an enum just wouldn't work. We use the native platform database, and we'll come up to the restrictions based on that as a result. Um, if you don't have any of those databases around, all you get is UTC support. Um, on Windows, as I said, there's some serious restrictions. They have really bad time zone support, although it looks like in Windows 8.1, they're finally joining the modern era. Um, we use an internal translation table to convert from Windows time zones. See there, you've got Central Standard Time. Those are all the INA codes that it converts into. We pick up the users, your user's country and the, the time zone and use the default zone for that. Um, and 
coming back the other way, we, we do the translation. That, that's part of Unicode, CLDR standard. We update every release from the standard thing. Um, some quick points about the API. Q time zone is null. It is not the default or system locale. So it's not like Q locale. It is like Q date time in that aspect. You can construct a name time zone. If it's invalid, you'll get an invalid time zone and it won't work. Uh, you can get metadata about the zone, display name. You can get offset data, so the standard offset and the daylight savings offset. Uh, transition data, the, when daylight time changes between two dates. Uh, you can find out what time zones are available on a platform. And you can actually, we've provided API for the Windows ID conversion for those uh, PIM apps who need to talk to Exchange servers. Uh, they need to know what the Windows ID is for a given Olsen ID. Um, so the more interesting stuff for you is in QDate time. Uh, there's a new time spec of time zone with the standard getters, setter, and conversion functions. Um, there's a newish time, uh, spec of offset from UTC. This was actually introduced in 4.6 for internal use inside Qt. It was never made pu given public API, never worked properly, but it was used in the uh, JavaScript uh, interpreters internally. Uh, that is now publicly available and can be used for the standard stuff. There's a time zone abbreviation uh, method you can call that will actually give you the right one instead of Q locale version that is the wrong one. And as daylight time will tell you if it's daylight time. Big change people probably need to know about the implications of is we now store the date internally in M6 rather than as a Q date and a Q time. Uh, we've got some extra convenience methods in there. The debug data stream is now actually useful. You can tell what type of date time you actually have, uh, M6 and time zones. There's a new date format for the RFC 2822 dates. Q time's got uh, met get and set methods for the M6 since the start of day. Instead of writing that horrible thing, which you'd be amazed the number of times it crops up when you're trying to convert a time, that's pretty useful. Um, the behavior changes that all this implies, in particular the change to M6. We have a reduced date range, only 114 million years. I'm sorry, people, but uh, 2 billion years. Yeah, I don't think there's too many people using that facility. Um, we now actually do proper support for the standard time to daylight time transition. The missing hour, we leap forward from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Before they used to be valid, you used to be able to call, add year, and end up in that gap, and you know bad things could happen. That now doesn't happen. It's all properly handled. Um, M62 returns zero if it's invalid instead of some incredibly huge random number that would give you funny results if uh, you cut your, your code if you didn't call ability to check. We also sometimes apply daylight time before 1970, even in spite of the documentation saying that we didn't. Um, there are performance implications, though, of all this. The constructor is slower. I haven't put up a percentage because it looks horrible, but it comes from such an incredibly low base that it's, you know, for most people's purposes, it's insignificant. Uh, accessing date and time is slower, so if you're in a million repeat loop, you might want to cache it. Is valid is slower because it has to do more work. Everything else, however, is at least 40% faster. Current date time is 80% faster. Um, and we've got more time uh, performance improvements coming in 5.3. Uh, one thing about Q time zone, it can be expensive to load up the time zone file and data. You want to cache it. But we leave that up to you. We're not trying to decide what's the best performance profile for your app. Um, time specs. Basically, you've got the four specs now. Read the documentation and find out what's appropriate for you. But please, please, please try stick to using UTC if it's anything that's um, really important because we've still got bugs in the local time implementation that's only going to be fixed in 5.3. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'll skip the. We're basically going to, in 5.3, allow you to uh, use choose your own uh, time zone back end. So if you're on Windows and you must have reliable time zone information, you will be able to load up the TZ file. Um, Date time, we're going to fix a lot of our inconsistent problems across the platforms. At the moment, we use the C standard MK time, which performs differently on every platform, has serious bugs in it on Linux. Um, so we're going to switch our back end to use Q time zone instead. It will be faster. It will be consistent across all platforms. And in the last 25 seconds, Q locale will be getting quite a few changes. We've been through three different plans. Plan A was to ex extend our existing code and data, found that that would explode the library far too big. Plan B was to use ICU everywhere, except we can't do that on iOS, and the Windows developers don't like shipping an extra 10 megan libraries. Plan C is now to use entirely native resources, and hopefully all of them except Win32 work properly. Bing, bing, bing. I believe that's my time is up. 
Uh, so uh, vote for me, and because I made it, I get a cookie. Thank you. <laughs> Just for the record, you would have had six more seconds. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to use them now? No, no, I'll store them for later. <laughs> and time's up. Thank you. John Late, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>